Hey everyone, Taxman here uh, with a little uh, six-sided podcast update for everyone. Um, some of you may have heard the news uh, that came out over the weekend here regarding one Brutus the fucking barber beefcake and uh, his uh, unfortunate dealings with uh, with CWE. Now, um, I'm going to read because I'm sure that most people have heard um, Brutus's story as of already, um, just because he's, uh, he's a WWE legend. So his story obviously gets out there a lot quicker than, uh, than anything else would in today's day and age of, uh, social media. Everyone loves the dirt as, uh, as, uh, Jim Barnett would say, but the reality is that his version of facts and his version of truth and everything else is going to get out there way quicker and and get a lot more exposure uh, than anything that you would ever hear from the local boys, which is who I'm going to talk about right now. So for those who don't know the story, uh, essentially Brutus Beefcake was booked on a CWE um, 31 night tour. Uh, this would have spanned from starting in uh, Winnipeg, uh, going all the way to the West Coast of Canada and back ending in Thunder Bay, I believe. So what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to uh, read the CWE uh, official statement on what actually happened because, like I said, Brutus's statement is already out there. Honestly, he's he's given about four or five different versions of it, and each one gets progressively worse and progressively more in his favor, as you can imagine with you know somebody of his mm, character in the wrestling business. So. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to read the official statement from uh, Danny Duggan. And uh, from there, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, CWE, my experiences with them, and kind of how things operate here in Canada. Because if you are listening to this, you're in the States, or, or especially if, if you're listening to this and you're in Europe, um, things are a lot different there in terms of how a wrestling tour is... Uh, put together, how dates are managed, how um, essentially an entire card, an entire roster, and, a, and an entire tour is, is assembled. It's vastly different than how it is, especially here on the prairies. Like I'm from Winnipeg, if anybody didn't know that. Um, how it is on the prairies even is far different from how it is in, say, um, Ontario or Quebec or the eastern uh, provinces like uh, Newfoundland, Labrador, etc. So once again, I'm going to uh, read off Danny's statement, and uh, and then I'm going to talk about my experiences with uh, CWE. So, this may be a little bit dry as I read his statement. The, the reality is I want to read it um, as he wrote it. That way it's, you know, it, it, it's not my spin, right? It, it's not, there's no spin on this. This is, in my opinion, these are the facts, and I'm going to explain why I think that as well as we get into this. So. Without further ado, the official statement uh, regarding the CWA Brutus Beefcake fiasco that quickly became far spread wrestling news. My sincerest apologies for the delay in not getting this done sooner as my inbox has been flooded with inquiries from wrestlers, promoters, fans, wrestling media, and media in general wanting the scoop. After being on the road nearly 40 days, I'm finally able to sit down, although it's nearly 6 a.m. as I struggle to stay awake, but I shall make no one wait any longer. I appreciate the patience and understanding in a world that wants news now. And we all know what that's like. I want to preface this uh, with even though the situation left me out of money and causing a damage control nightmare over the last five days of our tour, and even though I have concrete fact, materials, bank statements, texts, and etc., to dispute any claim otherwise that I'm about to write, it still has to be an internal struggle on if this was the right thing to do. In a day and age, our business is blown wide open to the general public. I'm a firm believer that a lot of it shouldn't be, and over 10 years of promoting and 16 years as a very active traveling wrestler, there have been many situations that you just bite your tongue for the greater good and for this lovely thing that still has a pulse, believe it or not, called kayfabe. However, as the story broke, it took on a life of its own, 
and really brought a lot of people out of the woodwork, both involved in our tour in some capacity and countless others sharing horrible experiences in previous dealings that made it quite clear that this wasn't one of those you caught him on a bad day situations and behavior that is often repeated. Eating the financial loss is something I'd prefer not to do and hope that the money is returned, but as someone who is passionately and aggressively promotes wrestling and promoted our brand across this country, a bigger loss is that the credibility of a promotion takes when they literally have their hands tied and for it or and for that it needs to be addressed. Now, indie promoter can have a bad stigma to it, and as a wrestler who's dealt with my share, I understand that some of the stink comes from, and there are some good guys out there. Unfortunately, their name and their brand has a fraction of the star power of a name talent in this day and age of social media, often a fraction of the network and reach. As a result, when the name talent is involved in bad dealings, it's beyond easy for them to spin a story to their liking and having it reach a lot more people with what appears to be a lot more credibility based on their celebrity and that the local indie is left in shambles as it is burnt paying fans, media, sponsors, and their markets who have not uh, who have not only have a hard enough time to get the promotion out in the first place, but also to maintain. All the while, the name moves on to the next promotion in hopes that he will draw for them virtually unscathed. I, for one, would love to see that one stop and for there to be accountability, and with social media today, I think that is possible. At least this appears possible as it's brought forward by many other stories like this. So this is the quick and dirty of the whole situation. Now, this is through uh, Danny Duggan's, obviously, eyes on the situation. But I'm going to explain why I, I would take his word as it is. So now that I bored you with my intent, here's the cold hard facts of what made its rounds and the situation at hand. Brutus Beefcake was booked to appear on 32 events over 32 nights as the headliner of the Strutton and Cutton Tour. Brutus Beefcake appeared on 27 of the 32 events and was paid for 28. The 28th payment came after the event the next night, which he acknowledged he knew nothing the morning before that he couldn't make, but took the payment anyways. When putting together the deal with Missy Beefcake, his wife, which is a whole other element to the story to the month nightmare that I endured, it was expressed that there would not be a deposit sent, but Brutus would be paid nightly. Some talent require a deposit. Sadly, the word deposit makes me cringe as four to five times it has resulted in me giving away free money to never see it again, so I avoided it at all cost. Which is truly unfortunate as many legitimate professionals ask for one rightly so, and some bad apple promoters paint us all with the same brush, so sadly some wrestlers do the same on that side so they can just avoid the whole thing together. Furthermore, CWE has been in operations for 10 years, and not only uses former WWE, WCW, ECW stars, etc., but also current and former Impact and Ring of Honor stars, and have probably used nearly or over 100 of them at this point, with only a great track record and reputation, but with a lot of these talents also returning on multiple occasions, and ones we've used for the time, first time actually being recommended or put in contact in with us by previous talent that has come in. Any era that talent may come from can be easily pointed to dozens of guys that he worked with and will give us the okay. Fast forward to a few days prior to the tour, Missy contacts me with a request to send $5,000 US dollars. So you have to understand that, that there's about a 33% Canadian exchange rate on top of that prior to Brutus getting on the plane. I explained that sending nearly two weeks worth of wages prior to him even arriving is completely out of the question and is not only happening but not financially possible. It is explained to me that Brutus never leaves home without a deposit. I explained that his flight has already been purchased and his advertising in the 32 markets are also already promoting his appearance. I resent a screenshot of our original agreement of the deposit being questioned and asked why this is an issue all of a sudden. No answer is given. My hands are tied as I don't want to and can't afford to lose the guy who is on tour and promoted around, sponsorships sold on, and the media lined up so we have to agree that he will receive payment for four shows upon his arrival so he was always ahead on payments and never owed any money. The second is that he was agreed upon the lovely feeling in my gut that said, you're going to get screwed, and here we are. It was agreed that he would be getting paid four shows by his arrival, and by that I mean not Brutus physically getting paid, 
but me having to go above and beyond to send Missy large sums of money, regardless how challenging it was to do so in some of the smaller markets we were in. Once again, this is something I'm going to talk about after I read uh, Danny's statement here. After that, I would send Brutus's weekly payments to Missy with him still being ahead on payments. Fast forward to him or her getting sent the fourth bank payment. It is wired and now they are requesting that instead of sending the last one, I pay him cash every night. Sure, no problem. Now, the final show he did for us here in Winnipeg was Friday, November 16th. He has claimed that in the morning he knew he was leaving and that Missy was trying to get a hold of me. I'll get to that in a second. I paid him as per our agreement and for the following night and not said a word or and he didn't say a word of him leaving. Money being owed or not owed aside, him getting up and fleeing the country without telling anybody as if not horribly offensive and disrespectful as taking the money as he not only screwed the crew that he had been on the road who were taking care of him day to day for the last month the company as a whole, but a sold-out show in Thunder Bay that expected to see him and multiple towns after that. With him leaving and not informing me, I could not find out until a few hours before bell time, which I sent a direction to a crew member that involved Brutus, and he responded, Brutus didn't tell you he was leaving? Nope, he sure didn't. Checked my voicemail, checked my text, nothing. A text was sent to Brutus once I got off the call asking, are the boys ribbing me or did you leave the tour? No response all day Saturday, and not until a few hours before the show on Sunday, in which she cited a family emergency and that I didn't answer Missy's messages. False. The last communication I had with Missy was her telling me that it was an emergency she needed to get a hold of on Brutus on Friday morning after I dropped him off for an appearance. This wasn't uncommon as she would blow up my phone like a mad woman if Brutus didn't respond to her promptly and wanted to get a hold of him. This was the last communication she attempted, and I gave him his hotel number, name, and number. In fact, there was a family emergency, or sorry, if in fact there was a family emergency, it was Friday morning. I saw Brutus all evening at the event, and he didn't say a word about leaving the next morning. I saw him at the after party, and he didn't say a word about leaving the next morning. I gave him an envelope of money for the next night, and he didn't say anything about leaving the next morning to me or anyone in the crew. He left the next morning, not only with the next night's pay, but over 100 fresh off the print 8x10 photos the company printed and provided for his meet and greet sessions per our agreement. To be very clear, if there was a family emergency, by all means, family first. However, given the fact that both Brutus and Missy had zero problem or consideration for blowing up my phones multiple times a day, if they felt the need to be heard or that there was zero effort to stay on the tour in any way the company could have been salvaged or situ or salvaged the situation any better than we could have. All we knew is Saturday he wasn't going to be there for a few hours before bell time and still worked aggressively to find a replacement. An official word on what was going on still couldn't be put out until late Sunday and we still didn't know what the heck was wrong even though we let the live audience know that he would be removed and we removed him from appearing online. Now, finally, after hearing from him, we had nearly secured Jimmy Jacobs and made the announcement that we were finally off the brutal Northwestern Ontario Highway uh, with no internet and no capable way of hammering out notice. So they did end up getting Jimmy Jacobs, and you can read through his uh, Twitter timeline that he had, uh, had a great time at the show. Um, he was very happy to fill in for Brutus, as you as you may imagine, so... There is your strutting and cutting story. Now, so this is Danny's cut. I have gone on record saying that this was the worst experience of my career with no second, and sadly, this is the truth. I have always been blessed to work with some incredible talents, and no, it always isn't easy. When you're on the road for weeks, and in this case, a month at a time, you're going to clash sometimes. Whether it's personally or professionally, that's life. Then factor in the Canadian travel grind. Even through this nightmare of a month, I still tried very hard to give Brutus the benefit of a doubt. There were days that he was one of the boys, and other days just a miserable human being and downright uncomfortable to be around. I'm very realistic that for a man of his age and for his body to be in the shape that it's in, being on the road is going to be tough and you might have some bad days. But every day seemed to be a bad day for Brutus at some point or another, and no matter how the crew or myself tried to accommodate him, there was no making him happy. But it's because he is a grizzled veteran on the road, right? The last few tours alone have been headlined by Ron Simmons, Jake Roberts, Nikita Koloff, and Paul Orndorff. 
all absolute gentlemen professionals and not only a pleasure to be around day to day, but became a part of the team and contributed day to day to the talent and to the, and they are guys that I would recommend uh, many times over to people. You and you alone control what you project for the Canadian kindness. And it was a fever that Brutus wasn't catching up here. The deal came together very easily, but that's where it ended. Once I was locked in, it began. Professional wrestlers do not need a work visa to enter Canada to wrestle. Missy, who appointed herself my main and only contact for everything, contacted me about a month prior to the tour saying she needed a letter drafted for Brutus to come into Canada. This isn't uncommon as I do it for a lot of skeptical, skeptical American talents and it lays out the Canadian policy, their purpose of the visit, the timeline, etc. and my contact information. The letter is drafted and sent to her. The exact same one we have used for 10 years as designated by an immigration lawyer for this process. Also keep in mind that American wrestlers are appearing in CWE almost weekly with our rule shots as well. Well, not good enough for Missy. Missy wants me to draft up a letter and lie to Canada Customs and sign my name to it, not mentioning anything about wrestling or Brutus appearing at entertainment events and that he's strictly here for book tour. I explained that we don't need to lie that this letter will gain him entry as it has for many others. She is certain it's going to cause him an issue at the border, and I am certain it is not, and that all it will take is some searching for them online to see that he's appearing on wrestling events. Furthermore, lying will have him denied and possibly having both of us charged for lying to Canadian Customs. This is debated and somewhere along the way, she must have let it go because it was the last thing I heard from it and he entered the country. It was... It was requested that Brutus has a big vehicle to travel in because he's a big guy. No problem. Prior to a few talents cancelled and didn't make the tour, so we had to pivot on the fly and work with one less vehicle on the tour. Per her request, we put Brutus in the biggest vehicle, a Ram 2500. Plenty of room for Brutus, as you could realistically think, and we had put a third full-size adult in the front when we needed. The truck, however, was the biggest vehicle and would have the rain trailer attached to it and Missy was outraged. We were treating her husband like a jabroni by having the trailer attached to it on principle of being the ring truck. Although there were only three vehicles on tour, all tightly packed, mind you, with the loss of one, driving to the same venues and the same hotels roughly around the same most amount of days. And even though he had lots of personal space, more space than anybody else, but more importantly, more space than he would have had in any other vehicle, it just wouldn't suffice. Never in my life has it been so difficult to pay someone. As mentioned above, I have always paid the talent cash nightly. Some have requested it to get in a weekly installment so they have to carry less cash around them, but either way, they are paid what they are supposed to get paid. However, right from the start, I needed to send four shows up front because the situation we already mentioned, because Missy needed money too while Bruce was gone, at, while Brutus sorry, was gone, and that was a responsibility now put on me. Although a pain in the ass to my day, which is always beyond busy when you're touring a city and an event almost every day, I tried to empathize that she needed money too while he was away and would try to make it easier for them at this point, if I could, minus the fact that they seemed like decent folks. Right over the gate, I ran into my first uh, collision with what is to come. Missy respects or requests that I send the money via PayPal. No problem. Except it is. With the funds coming from Canadian Bank, there's a three to five day business day delay transfer to an American account. Either way, when it's sent, it's sent to hers. That's still not good enough, however, and she says that she needs it that day. So we agreed that the payments be accessible to her. So we try Western Union, except it's going to be a pretty penny to send a large sum, but I will guess I'll just eat that too. Except that they have a limit on what you can send to another country, and this is exceeded by Brutus or by Beefcake's amount owed, so it won't work either. Keep in mind, I have a show to get to and produce, and we have cash in hand that I just want to say, here, take it. We go to my bank and they can wire it for $25 US. It's agreed that's what we'll do for the next payment, and the rest with exceptions, so I absorb the extra $100 in wire feeds for the four fees for the shows they're requiring me to send instead of just giving them cash. Whatever, I have a show to get to. But first we need a bunch of vital information, so by which means in another hour at the bank, she calls her bank to get it, my bank processes and sets signs off on it. So essentially, uh, the money insta isn't instantaneous, she's phoning, and then, uh, then the money appears and she's cool with it. 
So for the next three weeks, I was to make a payment on Tuesday. But the fun would start on Friday before for Missy. What day are you sending the money? Saturday, are you still sending Brutus's money on Tuesday? Sunday, a reminder to send the money on Tuesday. With whose text multiplied with hello, question mark, are you there, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. If I wasn't able to respond to the text or had just been getting three hours of sleep that day. And it wasn't just text. It would be repeated phone calls to ask the same question regarding things four days away that I had no way or had any bearing to do on that specific day. Then came the day to make payment and the phone calls would start at 7 a.m. and continue every half hour until the time that I would be sending the payment. Keep in mind some regions had us two hour behind her time zone and most nights we were up late not only traveling to the next town so the last thing I needed was my phone blowing up at a terribly early hour preventing me from sleeping. The message would become aggressive. My favorite being, when are you sending me my money? I didn't realize I had hired Missy Beefcake and she was working on a tour, but I learned that day. It is common practice that we do some some kind of percentage split with the headlining talent on gimmicks. As a result, we have always had a third-party staff member handle the cash flow and accounting of what is sold so there was no bias or disagreement in what was sold or earned each night. Not once, to my recollection, has that system ever been an issue. A third party keeps track of the accounting that both the company and the headliner have access to, which ensures that both parties have everything on the level. This was fine for a few nights with Brutus, and then it wasn't. We had a referee handling it on this one night, and he came back after the show and started to ask who gets the money. I explained to him that the referee holds on to it, as he will be with him at intermission, and as well, he will count it out with everybody after the event. Minutes later, Screaming Brutus came into the small locker room, making it seem that if he can't be trusted with the money, he may as well get on a plane and go home. Completely off guard while I'm putting on my boots as he leaves the room, I can put together what happened. As he left the locker room, he went to the ring and yelled at the referee to give him the fucking money. Getting to the bottom of it later, it turns out that according to Brutus, he wanted the money in a float in case he needed change, uh, which he never once indicated in his tirade earlier. He went on about not being trusted, which I found ironic, as he held me up for money up front on the same principle. Moving forward the next few nights, he refused to let the referee handle the money. The referee was shaken from trying to deal with Brutus, uh, biting his head off, so I told him to just uh, keep his best track of sales for me, and I would handle it from there. The next two nights, his numbers total, that would be the ref's, numbers totaled higher than the cut that Brutus gave me. Either his math was off, or I was be taken for a ride. Either way, I threw my hands up telling myself that if this is going to make him feel that much better and smarter about himself to skim off the top every night, go for it. One less headache from him at this point in time, and I was trying very hard to to make money. I'm not sorry. And although I try very hard to make money, I'm not driven by it and wasn't going to let what was otherwise a great tour be ruined for me mentally. Even though what we had become daily frustrations, don't get me wrong, I'm sure he had plenty too. I tried to help him make his life easier. Those tours aren't glamorous. We get on the road and grind. There is no reason, or sorry, there's a reason no one else is running a 32 show across Canada tours. You got to go a bit rough if there is to grind it. As much as we are producing big tours, we're still a very small company and I'm one man running the company. And I completely understand that as a result, my communication may be challenging at the best of days as I try to account for everyone and everything that needs to get done but it's never from neglect from being overwhelmed. Yes, but neglect. No. When traveling across Canada, especially rural Canada, hotel options can be at a minimum. Some towns only have a few. Some towns only have one hotel. A lot of Canadian towns are operated by a specific industry working in them and hotel rooms can be a very rare find. Other times just flat out stupid expenses and they have you by the balls to due to your lack of options. As a result, some nights we have the lux- a nice luxury hotel to stay in and others we are at the local motel. All of which have a clean bed and shower, which is really all we need for a few hours that we're actually in the town. We're definitely not shutting up, setting up shop with the added bells and whistles that you need to, to have anyways. The crew would typically stay in the same hotel unless limited rooms force us to split up, but everyone stayed at the same hotels and, there are usually, and they are usually the same ones we stay in every tour. Brutus, however, wanted a brand name or nothing, regardless of how nice or s- the local or smaller chain would be. He even offered to pay the difference if it meant staying where he wanted to. 
Outside of his vehicle leaving or having to do an extra trip, it was fine by me if he was willing to pay the difference. Except that he really wasn't going to, and on nights he opted for his pick of a hotel, he returned for receipts for rooms of over $150 a night, almost if not double what the rest of us were staying in, which, like I mentioned, were completely fine establishments. Brutus wanted the rooms to be paid in full and not at the difference like he offered with him originally, uh, as well, holding our gimmick money hostage every night, and I knew it was coming out of my end one way or the other, so I was taking care of it with a big smile on my face. As I write this, I want to make this one thing very clear. I am personally very capable and very confident in standing up for myself, and I've had to do so on many occasions, and it was on my mind near a daily basis to leave him on the highway in the middle of Saskatchewan, but desperately wanted to make it through this tour as it was well advertised and is what we advertised, and I preferred to bite the bullet as opposed to the fans in each market who paid and expected to see him. I put this out there now for promoters to be fully aware of these of this reality and these old carnies can put you in knowing that sometimes you're in my position so that you can take the decision if it's something you want to risk. To his credit, Brutus was drawing good business for us. He even sold out his book very quickly and I offered on multiple occasions to be, or I offered on multiple occasions for him to be set up to be shipped more so he can maximize his revenue. He opted not to. Prior to the tour, I asked if he was bringing merchandise and he said just his book. As a result, I bought bulk Brutus t-shirts, tour t-shirts, and asked if there would be any, or and as it had asked if there would be any. The markup was minimal and less than if I simply sold my old shirts, but it would be the, to complete the experience for those meeting Brutus. This was all fine and well with Brutus until one day he ran out of books. Then all of a sudden, Missy says that she was being contacted with a cease and desist from WWE about Brutus shirts being sold in Canada. I explained that this is quite odd because you think that they'd be more concerned with him being advertised on a 32-day tour rather than t-shirt, but I hadn't heard anything from them. That would be WWE. Furthermore, that might make sense if WWE owned Brutus the Barber Beefcake, but unknown to her, Brutus actually told us that WWE doesn't own his name, and in fact he does. Knowing she was blatantly lying to me, I sent her to. I asked her to send me a copy of the letter that she had received, and I would contact my lawyer and uh, have him contact WWE to look into it. She asked who that was, followed up by not sending it, and just said that it was shorted, sorted out days after my dec her declining of uh, handing over the letter. Now, when you think of professional wrestlers, you can't help but think of the anticipation of their entrance sorry my dog's barking upstairs apparently not with brutus pal each night brutus serves us a special outside the ring referee and would be involved after the match in the ring however his induction of introduction involved him getting up from his merch table and walking to the ring and walking back to the table after the match was over i asked him one night if he could please please come through the curtain and add the visual effect to the attraction but he told me it doesn't matter and I guess just moving forward, it didn't matter where we came from uh, through the ring or to the ring anymore. It is near impossible to get major media coverage to cover professional wrestling in Canada, but we have somehow managed to get an entire country to do so on a regular basis, and it helps us building our brand big time. A lot of media outlets were excited to interview Brutus and less excited to tell me afterwards on a reoccurring basis that it was a dud and he didn't seem interested in being there. They weren't wrong. And you can watch this part, by the way. It's uh, on CWE's site or on YouTube. Go watch our CTV Regina piece. The interviewer asked Brutus if he had any advice for young wrestlers in the business, and he proceeds to tell them to get out of the business, don't get involved, and that the business is dead. Mind you, we're on television promoting a wrestling tour across the country that is happening right now. I have to jump in and put over that wrestling is alive and well and that we're bringing it to the forefront. From there forward, you... Uh, would visibly notice me cutting him off during interviews and taking questions to try and protect my brand and the business for that matter. So after 26 days on tour, I'm finally getting to two very short nights in my own bed while we stop in Winnipeg. I dropped the kingdom, who you'll know from Ring of Honor, they were also on the tour, off at the hotel, parked in my driveway, have my bags in hand, start walking towards the door to see my pregnant girlfriend for the first time in a nearly a month, and my five pets. I'm stoked, but before I can get inside... The phone rings. It's Brutus. Not just Brutus, but a screaming Brutus who I had just seen five minutes prior to at the hotel who seems just fine. 
He's yelling so loud and out of control that I think he might have pocket dialed me while yelling at someone else. Nope, it was me. Lucky me. Turns out when he checked into his room, there was someone in it. That's what I gathered anyways. I thought maybe the clerk gave another wrestler to, a key to the room thinking that they were just in there too. Nope, just an honest mistake uh, where they accidentally gave him a key to another room that a guest was staying in. Instead of simply going to the desk and explaining that there was someone else in the room that he needs another, uh, he was screaming at me and at this poor girl who barely speaks English, who you can tell was visibly shaken up and nervous by this large screaming man as if we ribbed him and intentionally put a stranger in his room to upset him. It was truly unreal. Between that and the horribly inappropriate racial remarks about a hotel clerk earlier in the trip and one in the presence of a wrestler on our crew who that, not, who that night resulted in, I will not be traveling with Brutus Beefcake again. To openly drink in a ca case of beer in an elementary school, I had no strut left in me. Even though I was terribly disappointed on a business end, we would be disappointing our fans. Or oh, sorry, even it, though I was terribly disappointed on a business level and we would be disappointing our fans, I was truthfully relieved on a personal level that this nightmare had come to an end. Deep down, they may not ever realize it, but the fans missed him or the fans who missed him didn't miss much. There were definitely some good, but definitely more bad reports that surfaced from fans about his interactions with him at our shows. And for that, I apologize. We want nothing more than to provide you with the best and we continue to strive to. I feel a million times getting it out there. Thanks for letting me do so, Danny Warren. So that's Danny's kind of uh, take on the situation. Now, for myself, my dealings with CWE, I've been to... Oh, God, I couldn't even tell you. Um, hundreds of shows CW's put on. Um, every time has been a fantastic event, except for one. There was one time there was one problem, but it wasn't the event fault. Uh, was an issue with one of the wrestlers. But anyways, never had a problem with them. Actually, Danny himself uh, got me my start in wrestling. He actually set me up with a trainer from CWE that was uh, AJ Sanchez. That was a few years ago. And and uh, so I, I've met Danny a bunch of times. I know he's a straight up dude. I've seen some of the name talent that they've had on uh, the CWE shows. Uh, they've had like Chase Owens. They just had the kingdom on. Uh, Ron Simmons. We, I've, me and uh, Hollywood have seen Tony Atlas. We, like, they've had a ton, a ton of uh, former and current wrestling stars. And I've never seen anything from them Um to suggest anything that there's some sort of Mickey Mouse operation at all. Now, the other thing to keep in mind too, is when you're running shows in Western Canada, a lot of it is rural. And I don't mean rural as in, you know, the outskirts of a big, um, you know, U S city like Minneapolis or whatever. I'm talking about you're running towns that have 50 or a hundred people. And the venue is, uh, you know, an elementary school gym, because that's literally the biggest venue that's available in that city. So to say that it's a grind is an understatement to say the least. So the fact of doing like a 32 day tour is not just simply a 32 day. Like we make a town, we do a show, we make it. No, there's, there's, it's logistically a nightmare. Plus the fact that weather is quite inclement at this time of year. Uh, Usually snow starts in uh, October and the roads can literally, literally be a crapshoot from Winnipeg to BC from October until Jesus, almost uh, May sometimes. That's just the way it is. There's been lots of times where May long we get a snowstorm and, and there's a foot of snow and it's crazy. So I guess if, if Brutus was complaining that that part of the tour was hard. Yeah, it is because it's, it's really rural. There's, like literally if you could drive a hundred kilometers and not see anything in stretches of Saskatchewan or Alberta or Manitoba even. And especially out in BC when you're driving through the Okanagan, for example, that's just, that's a life of running a wrestling promotion in Western Canada. That's why stampede wrestling for years ran that the whole segment. That's why they're not a company anymore. It's just, it's, it's so hard to run, but the fact is that a small promotion CWE tries to run it. They're very successful at it. In my opinion, 
They do a ton of charity work. They're always doing things for uh, cancer care, uh, for the Tim Hortons, um, Camp Day funds. Just, I, I always see them doing community events. They're always raising money for something. They're always um, going above and beyond at their shows to make sure that the fan gets the best experience possible. So when I see a lot of bullshit from someone like Brutus who, because of his name, is going to get carried. Like, there's no two ways about it. It's, it's legitimately super disappointing. And unfortunately, now you're going to see all the, all the fucking dummies on Twitter that would just automatically read, process, and, and buy every single piece of bullshit that he tells you, regardless of, of how ridiculous or not it may seem. And obviously they're just going to be talking shit about CWE, which is a shame because once again, this is a company that tries really hard to get really good shows together. And quite frankly, I, like I said, I, I've been to so many shows with them. I, I couldn't even keep track of and save for one time out of how many I've, se I've seen and for how many big names I've seen, like, like Scott Steiner or Chris masters or whoever, like just, they, they go above and beyond to make the experience uh, something that you will remember every show that you go to. So yeah, just, I, I hope that they can, uh, can get, we'll say over the hump from this. And uh, yeah, what can you say? You know, I've heard a lot of bullshit about uh, Brutus, you know, over the years, uh, how he's a fucking crook and how he, you know, would sell, um, you know, other people's merch with his name on it. And I, I never really believed all of it. Right. I, I also heard on uh, 83 weeks, that's uh Bischoff's new podcast. He was telling the story that uh, during the, uh, during the uh, photograph signing or an autograph signing, um, he was forging Hogan's autograph on photographs of him when he was Horace Hogan and a Hulk or Hollywood Hogan, um, eight by tens at autograph signing sections. And he, and he's forging Hogan's name, putting his name on it and selling it for a marked up price. Like it actually Hogan's, um, signature. So, you know, when I hear something like that, you know, you, you take it with a grain of salt, right? Cause like, obviously a lot of people in wrestling exaggerate things. Obviously, if you've seen Brutus's take on the situation, which is fucked by the way, but anyways, so I, you you add all of these little things that you hear up and then you put it against this account that I just read off here and it just makes you shake your head, right? And once again, this is this is a big WWE legend who just unfortunately is going to cause some bad business, hard feelings and hard times for a uh, wrestling company that's really just trying to do well in a hard market. There's no way to describe it. Canada's a hard market for wrestling. But the fans that show up and the fans that invest and, and put their money and time and effort into coming to shows greatly appreciate it. That's why they do it. So, and I, I realize now that there's, you know, I, I saw Kelly Klein came out and said something. Um, obviously, everybody's going to have a different experience on a tour. There's a hundred things that can transpire on a tour that would cause you to have a good or bad experience. Obviously that's, that's the case. And I'm not here to debate, you know, whether her experience was whatever, good, bad, indifferent, whatever. But what I'm trying to say is when you have somebody trying to systematically attack and degrade and take down a, a company like CWE, a small time company like CWE, that's trying to do the right thing and do right by their wrestlers and do right by the fans. It's really unfortunate. So my hope is that uh, this doesn't hurt business for CWE at all. In fact, I hope that this uh, ramps up business for them because I hope that people, um, whether you're in Winnipeg or Thunder Bay or Saskatoon or Prince Albert, whatever. If CW is coming to your town, I highly suggest and recommend that you go check them out. Uh, I highly suggest and recommend that anybody who watches this video, uh, please go search them out on Twitter uh, at CWE Canada um, and just throw your support, man. It, everything will help in this uh, type of situation and just this is one of those things, right? Like us wrestling fans, you can choose to believe what you want to believe. 
You can choose to think that I'm full of shit too. That's fine. The fact of the matter is I've seen CWE in work. I've seen the behind the scenes stuff. I've seen how they treat people. I've heard how they, I had a goddamn half hour conversation with Chase Owens one night at a CWE show. And we're just talking about the tour. And he said, well, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard. You know, it's a grind, but like he wouldn't trade it for anything. And I believe he just went on his Twitter as well and said, He's done four years of tour with CWE. He'd do it again if he could, right? It, that's just the reality of it all. So when you sign up in Canada to do a tour like this, you have to expect certain things. Whether or not Brutus Beefcake, Brutus the fucking barber Beefcake, I should say, um, thought it was going to be some glamorous thing. It's It it can't be. You're not going from Vegas to Los Angeles to Minneapolis. It, no, no. You're going from towns that literally have a little bit of industry, one hotel, and that's it. And But a lot of wrestling fans that want to see wrestling, and that is the fucking point of a company like CWE trying to get out there and uh, and make it happen for the fans. So CWE, uh, Danny, and everyone else there, keep your heads up. I know you guys are going to get through this. Um, once again... Everybody, please make sure you go and follow them and uh, send them a little message of encouragement uh, C- at CWE Canada on Twitter. You can also find them, uh, CWE Wrestling, on Facebook as well. Go throw them a like. Go throw them a great message. And uh, I hope that uh, this at least clears up some of the uh, bullshit that Brutus fucking Barber Beefcake is throwing out there. And I'll say it right now, fuck that guy. And... Um, yeah, that's what I got to say about that. So for myself, the tax man, um, and to all of you uh, watching this right now or who will be watching this in the future, I will say, as I usually do, take care of yourselves and each other. Good night, everyone.